Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a collab with my friend Simon Clark, where we're going over five top tips for studying for exams. Now Simon is another YouTuber. He studied physics at Oxford University and then did a PhD at Exeter University. He's really cool. He's got loads of experience with taking exams. So we're going to be learning from his wisdom. And actually when he came over to my place the other day, he and I spent three hours discussing answers to various questions that people sent in via Instagram, all related to revision and study tips. And I'll be uploading those to YouTube over the next few weeks. But if you want to see them right now, you can find them on Nebula, which is a streaming service that Simon and I are both helping to build. Nebula is partnered with CuriosityStream who are very kindly sponsoring this video. So if you sign up to CuriosityStream, you'll get free access to all the videos on Nebula. But I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. Tip number one, the spaced repetition diary. If I could travel back in time and slap two words into 10 year old Simon's head, it, they would be spaced repetition. I cannot stress enough how important this technique is. Spaced repetition is all about resetting the forgetting curve. In the 1800s, a scientist called Ebbinghaus discovered that if you memorize basically anything, your memory for that will just decay exponentially over time. That's why we can read something in a textbook and think that we understand it, but if we come back to it a week later, we'll find that it's probably completely gone. Ebbinghaus found that if you interrupt this forgetting curve by revising the topic the next day, it actually takes you longer to forget it again. And then if you revise it a week later, for example, it takes you longer still. And by the time you've done this a handful of times, i.e. you've repeated the topic at spaced intervals over time, it's pretty likely to be in your long term memory. So you're unlikely to ever forget it. So how do we do this? Well, I've got my own patented retrospective revision timetable series. I'll put a link to that in the video description. But Simon actually has his own rather interesting method for doing the same thing. To give you an example, when I was doing my third year exams at Oxford, uh, it was the best like academic performance of my academic career it did really, really well. I think the reason for it was I used this technique where I would on a given day, if I studied a particular subject, write in a paper diary I did on, say, the 1st of May, uh, atomic physics, looking at a particular subtopic. I'd then go forward a day and write down that topic again, go forward a week, write that topic, go forward a month and write that topic. And then as you went through your revision, you gradually populated this diary with the uh, revision that you needed to go back and look at on a given day. So you get to, say, I don't know, May uh, 14th, and you would say, right, well, I now need to revise this part of atomic physics, this part of general relativity, this part of uh, subatomic physics. And you would have a ready-made checklist of stuff to go over again, as well as the stuff that you had to look forward to in your revision plan. And it meant that I covered everything several times at these increasing intervals, and it just stayed in my head so much better. So if we're using Simon's method, we'd get to any one date, and we'd already have a pre-populated list of all the topics that we need to study on that date based on our spaced repetition intervals. But it was the ease at which I could rock up to the library, open up my diary and say, right, what's today? It's the 14th of May. Okay, I've got these five topics to do first. Let's go. And it just made life so much easier. And I did so much better because of it. Tip number two, better results in less time. I would place a large amount of money on a bet that I would have done better at uni if I had done more extracurricular activities and if I'd actually had less time to do my work. I think one of the biggest problems I had was that I let my work just expand to fill the time that was available, which was all day. I think if I'd actually said, you know what, I'm going to learn how to play tennis and I had a session, let's say I was really ambitious, I had a session every day at four o'clock. That meant that I had to go to my lectures in the morning and then I had four hours from 12 to get all my work done. And it meant that I had to actually really focus and get this stuff done in that time chunk. And then, you know, when it got to four o'clock, tough luck, out of time, got to go to tennis. Um, and constraining the work, I think would have made me so much more focused rather than just like, oh, you know, I've got all day. We'll get around to that at some point. Like we can take our time with this. There's a concept in the world of productivity called Parkinson's law. And that's the idea that work expands to fill the time that we allocate to it. I notice this in my life pretty much every day. Like if I'm off work and I set myself the goal of filming just one video in the day, I will procrastinate. I'll do anything else until 9 p.m. when then I'll bring myself to film that video. But if I set myself the goal of filming, say, five videos in the day and only give myself an hour for each one, I end up getting most of them done. And also I have more fun making the videos. In the same way that I think only diamonds can be made under pressure, you have to put yourself under that bit of pressure in order to actually get good work done. And then as an added benefit, you get to four o'clock and you've done the work, you get to go and go to tennis and then you can enjoy yourself and you actually have allocated time. Your mental health will be better off for it. So your work is better and your mental health is better. You just have to take that first kind of counterproductive seemingly step of saying, actually, no, I'm gonna dedicate these hours to definitely not working. That's my deadline and then just stick to it. Point number three, make studying great again. 
you're not going to want to actually study if you're doing so in a way that is just unpleasant. I'm a huge fan of making studying a more pleasant thing to do. Like if I've got exams to study for, I enjoy going to libraries and coffee shops and I'll tell myself that because I'm studying and being productive, I shouldn't feel guilty about buying, let's say, five lattes for the day. That just makes studying more pleasant, which means I'm more likely to do it. And similarly, I'll often play my Spotify study with me playlist through my AirPods or headphones, link in the video description if you want to check it out. And yeah, as Simon says, the evidence is probably that it's suboptimal to study with music. It's probably a slight hit on your efficiency. But for me personally, I'm more than happy to take that hit on my efficiency because it means that I've got Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter bangers playing through my ears and making me feel like an absolute legend while studying. And that just makes it more pleasant, which makes me more likely to actually do it. So you gotta, yeah, not maximize fun, Minimize pain. <laughs> That's probably the best way of putting it. Before we continue, just a very cheeky plug. If you want to hear mine and Simon's thoughts on loads of study related topics like, you know, procrastination, motivation, revision timetables, study methods and strategies, tips for memorizing content, tips for understanding content, how to do well in maths and physics type exams, how to do well in essays, how to do well in medical exams, and like a load of other stuff, we have uploaded full length discussions of all of those that covers like three hours worth of content over at Nebula, which is a streaming platform that Simon and I are helping to build. If you don't have a Nebula account, you should definitely sign up for a trial of Curiosity Stream, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. And because Curiosity Stream and Nebula are friends, it means that if you have a Curiosity Stream account, you will get free access to all of the stuff on Nebula, including all of this revision stuff and all the videos in my own workflow series where I kind of deep dive into my favorite productivity apps. That's the end of the plug. Uh, let's move on. Point number four, take care of yourself. I've made a lot of mistakes <laughs> in, in you know, my academic career, but I think possibly the single largest one was not taking better care of myself. Um, and I feel like it's the one aspect when you're putting together a study plan that just gets overlooked. You're like, I've got this many hours in a day after you know, finishing lectures and such and such. And so that's the number of hours I'm gonna do of work. And I think it's so incredibly counterproductive to do that because it just ignores the fact that you are a biological system that requires maintenance and it requires downtime. And you know, you actually have to look after this this body that you is carrying your brain around. It's all well and good saying, oh, you know, the brain is going to go and do this many hours of work and the brain is going to do this. The brain is carried by the body and the body is going to break down if you don't, you know, give it some time off from time to time. And so will the brain. So when you're, you know, studying, when you're crafting a revision plan, you have to be uh, realistic in saying, you know, I need a couple of hours a week just reading a book or going to the cinema or playing video games or whatever it is. It's highly individual and you know, that's absolutely fine. That's the way it should be. You shouldn't look at what other people are doing and say, well, I need that much free time. You need as much free time as you need in order to keep your brain functioning at optimum efficiency. When my friends and I were preparing for our final year medical school exams, we had this great system whereby during the daytime, we'd be studying either by ourselves or kind of in a group. But then most evenings for a few hours, we would get together usually in my room because my room had an open door policy and we would order pizza or sushi and we'd play board games for a few hours like Avalon and Articulate, absolutely incredible board games if you haven't played them. And then after that few hours of downtime, we'd wake up the next morning and then we'd just kind of repeat the process. And all of this just made it really, really fun because it meant we were doing our work efficiently and kind of working together as a team, but also we had this kind of chill downtime to relax. You know, in the same way that um, in the run up to an exam, you might say, right, I need to revise all the time and then I'll go to bed late every night, get up early and study from the first thing in the morning. You wouldn't say to an Olympian to train absolutely every waking hour of the day in the run up to the Olympics. You would expect them to take some slack time to let their muscles recover, let some slack time to allow their head to get into the right headspace for the Olympics. The exam that's coming up for you is your Olympics and you've got to make sure that you're in the right sort of frame of mind and in the right condition physically and mentally to do that. And that's not just about the knowledge and the, the techniques you have in your head, it's about where your mental health and your physical health are at. You have to be in the right place if you want to do well in your exams. Tip number five, don't compare your behind the scenes to someone else's highlight reel. Something that one of my tutors said to me at Oxford was that um, don't be distracted by what everyone else is doing because some people will look like they are doing everything incredibly easily and they don't have to spend long hours in the library. And the fact is they do, they might want you to think that they don't, but what they're effectively showing you is it's like a highlight reel. It's like a sizzle reel of their academic potential. Whereas what you are seeing is the day to day behind the scenes in real time. You don't see the sexy kind of like sizzle reel at the end of it. Other people do. So, you know, remember that the way that you view other people is how other people potentially view you. So don't compare your 
real-time experience to someone's edited highlights. In the same way that um, when you're at the gym, you don't compare your middle to somebody's end or somebody's beginning at the same time. Like it's not, a fair, it's not an equal comparison. You are seeing things at a different rate of time when you're comparing your studies to somebody else's. My friend Paul used to teach medical students while we were at university and he tells this great story about one of his physiology classes and it was him as a teacher and there were three students and he asked, you know, to the group this random niche question about physiology and one of the kids somehow knew the answer to that. And he, he saw that the other two were kind of feeling bad that they didn't know the answer to it and were like very impressed that this other guy knew the answer to this niche question. And so Paul asked the guy, like, how did you know the answer to that? And the guy's reply was that, lol, I'm so far behind on all of these lecture series. I was flicking through the lecture notes and I just happened to read that one fact earlier this morning when I was going through it. And I think this is great because so often we're comparing our own performance to kind of the performance of our friends around us. But I think it's really important to recognize that our friends and colleagues and everyone else is just winging it just as much as we are. So that was five top tips for revision from my friend Simon Clark. I'll put links to all of his social stuff down below. You should definitely subscribe to his YouTube channel. Uh, his YouTube channel was actually one of the fundamental inspirations for my own uh, when I and I discovered it a few years ago before starting out on YouTube because like as soon as I discovered Simon's channel I felt a real kind of kinship with him because you know he, he won't mind me saying he's a bit of a nerd he kind of sounds like I do he enjoys singing he was vlogging about his life as a PhD physics student and before seeing Simon's channel I thought that in order to do well on YouTube you had to have like a loud and effusive personality and be like over the top but Simon did such a great job of creating like thoughtful valuable content um, and so that was like a big inspiration for me to start this YouTube channel. So I'll be indebted to him for a very long time. But yeah, that was five of his top tips for studying. And if you liked that discussion, you should definitely check out the rest of our series over on Nebula. If you didn't catch it earlier in the video, Nebula is a streaming platform that Simon and I are helping to build. And it's sort of like a YouTube alternative uh, where we can put sort of more detailed or kind of more weird content that might not necessarily work well on YouTube. So for example, like three hours worth of discussions about various study tips, probably isn't the sort of thing that I would put into YouTube video. I am planning to cut them up over time and make individual YouTube videos out of them because that's how the you know platform works and that's what's good for the YouTube algorithm. But if you wanna see the whole series and you care about kind of mining us for all of that insights, then you should definitely sign up to Nebula. To get access to Nebula, you should totally sign up for a free trial of Curiosity Stream, And then once that's over, you can sign up to the subscription, which is like $3 a month or $20 a year. And that gives you free access to all the thousands of documentaries on Curiosity Stream, which is founded by John Hendricks, the founder of the Discovery Channel. And Curiosity Stream has documentaries from all sorts of things, ranging from science, technology, education, lifestyle, food, loads of cool stuff. And on top of access to those thousands of documentaries on Curiosity Stream, you also get free access to all of the videos on Nebula, including all of these study tips videos that Simon and I made, along with my own workflow series, which is where I do a deep dive into all my favorite productivity apps. And you'll have access to loads of other stuff from tons of other creators as well, including Thomas Frank, who you might you know, know and love if you're into this productivity stuff as much as I am. But yeah, that was five tips from Simon Clark. I'll put a video over there somewhere that has more revision Q&A stuff with some of my friends from med school. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.